how's it going? I hope your summer is amazing. I know it is hot, but it is great and things are just awesome. They're super crazy busy. So I really, really, really appreciate your patience um, in sticking it out with me. I know I'm late with this update, but I've got a lot. I've got a lot going on right now. Um, and so I have not had the time to sit down and really film. And in, even in terms of watching videos, I'm gonna be real honest with all of the drama that's going on right now. Every time I turn on my um, YouTube to like chill out and watch some videos as I do my makeup or if I have a little bit of time in the evenings, I'm kind of sick and tired of seeing the same thing ad nauseum from video to video. So <sighs> it's time to get back in the groove. Like I wanna film and I wanna update you and where I am with my products. And I owe you several get ready with me, so let's do this. Um, in terms of where I am with my Anastasia, pardon me, I need to drink a cup. Sip of coffee. Um, in terms of where I am with the uh, Anastasia subculture palette, I have made a, a lot, a lot of progress. So let me show you back where the palette was in May. We'll talk about where it is currently. All right, here she is. I know, it's crazy, crazy. Can I just say though, before we get started on the rest of the shadows, Roxy down here. I have worn <laughs> this shadow consistently to warm up my crease since January. And we're still a lot in that pan. Like I find that vastly entertaining when the rest of these shadows go in like weeks. You know what I mean? So I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why that is the way that is, but um, yeah, here we are. So um, in terms of where I am with the palette, the one shade that I did not legit finish was Cube up here. And that was because I had hit substantial pan in it, but it collects so much powder from all the other shadows. And I've realized in the process of using this palette, when I repressed Dawn, I hated, hated the consistency of that shadow. So um, I decided since there was so much gone out of a cube that I was able to use. Um, I, I went on and decided to chuck the rest of it because I mean, I've made a Franken shadow with some other shadows that I feel confident dupe the duochrome goodness that used to be cube. And so, like I said, there wasn't much left. I went on and decided to just get rid of the rest of it. The next shadow that I really kind of focused in on was the shade Electric. I've loved wearing it on my lid. I've loved wearing it in my inner corner. Um, I have found that using a sponge tip applicator is the best way to apply it. And when it comes to these metallic shadows, it actually helps use up the shadow a little bit more effectively um, than just going in with a brush. I, I, I like the, the performance of it a lot better. I like the, the um, I wouldn't say they necessarily fade with a brush, but I have noticed that the shadows kind of stick around a lot longer when I apply them with a sponge tip applicator because they're just more densely packed on the lid, you know, kind of thing. So I wanted to share that with you. Now, moving right along with where we've gone in the palette, the next shade that I was kind of surprised to make tons of progress in is Mercury over here. It's kind of that cooler toned um, taupe mud brown shade. Um, as we get into updating the Lorac Pro palette, or Pro 2, pardon me, um, for Pan That palette, once I got through Cool Gray, I started going into Mercury. And it's a shadow that um, is quite powdery. It goes really fast. But once I started hitting Pan, chunks of it fell out. And so um, there were little pieces that fell out because, like I said, I don't want to repress the shadows. And then um, really hate the consistency. So this is kind of what I'm working with right now. It will go. Um, in fact, I owe you to get ready with me for that coral and gray um, vibe that is coming. Because like I said, I, I had so many problems filming different parts of it before. And then with everything going on in my life, I've had, I've traveled and I've had lots, lots going on. So I just haven't had the time to sit down and refilm it. But I owe that to you along with this bronze look. Um, that I've been rocking now. So I want to go on and get that film before the rest of this is just done. Then <clears throat> fudge is another one. I have uh, re-entered wearing it on an everyday basis. 
um, in my crease right now. I've got it on with this bronzy eye look today. It's supposed to be like a bronze eye look, but with the way my glasses are making it translate, it looks like a one shadow look, like crazy, crazy. This is why I gravitate towards smoky looks, because just kind of sidebar, I have been asked to make a lot of lighter looks, and I hear you. I enjoy them myself, but there is something about when you are nearsighted and you put your glasses on, it completely changes how that eye look translates and it makes it very warped and weird and what's what's very fun and sheer to wear like if you wear contacts doesn't show up at all or like case in point if I wear green eyeshadow and I'll do something that's really subtle and pretty as soon as I put my glasses on sometimes the green eyeshadow will disappear but there's enough of it there that you can see that my skin kind of reflects it and it makes it look a little bit weird and like yellowy toned it's very strange so that's one of the reasons why i tend to focus in more on smokier kind of vibes just to put that out there because the way that i would wear my makeup with contacts and i don't wear contacts anymore but um with contacts or like without glasses is very different than the way i wear it with my glasses because let me just show you if i take off my glasses right now the eye look is very intense it's very heavy it's probably a little bit too much for most people to wear on an everyday basis because it's a lot but as soon as I put my glasses on, you can see how much it diminishes and warps what's going on behind and it makes it look quite normal and wearable. So just wanted to put that out there because like I said, I hear you. I hear you when you're asking for the light summery looks, but um, that's not something that's practical for me on an everyday basis because I wear glasses every single day. I'm at the point where I can't wear contacts anymore. And so I'm going with what works for me and then I wear the look until I'm comfortable with it and confident with it. And then I, I come on here and share that. Um, with you in case your glasses wear or you want to you can always scale it back and not have such an intense look if you want to wear it with contacts or if you're not a uh, if you don't need corrective lenses but um, that's why I do things the way that I do so on that note um, going back to fudge I love wearing this in my crease with this bronzy kind of vibe um, but the other thing that I've noticed is I've hit substantial pan in that shadow and even just before I started filming this video when I raised up the palette I had another chunk kind of fall out onto the ground so that's gonna bring me into another single lady that we'll talk about in just a moment when I go in with the shadows but this is kind of where we are with the Anastasia subculture palette um, my goal kind of moving forward, I have decided to put in a Dorn as a single lady because I wanted to make some progress. I've tried working with Mocha for my Lorac Pro 2, but I'm just not feeling it. It's not quite as bright and as coppery and as bronzy kind of a penny vibe that I wanted. And so, um, Rachel really has inspired me. I think I'm trying to think what her, Rachel Thomas, I'll put her channel in the description box below because I really just, the way that she was talking about the Adorn shade, um, resonated with me and I've just been super inspired I wanted to wear it and, and I've fallen in love with this look but um, she talked about wearing it and so I wanted to really go through and make some progress because the other thing that I'm kind of you know let you walk around in my brain for a little bit um, I really just I, I want to like have some more versatility with my lipsticks I've been itching to wear red lipstick for a while I've been itching to wear like burgundy lipsticks and berries and fuchsias and all these things because I felt super boxed in last year with the Kat Von D Me Vita Look, a remix palette, um, because I was wearing such colorful eyeshadow, but since I do it in a smokier way, I felt like wearing bold lips on an everyday basis was a little bit too much. You know, like when you're taking your kids to school at eight o'clock in the morning, like a bold red lip and black eyeshadow in the corner of your eyes is like, it's a little much, you know what I mean? So um, with an easy eye like this, a bronze smoky eye, I've already worn a nude lip, I've worn a red lip, I've worn a fuchsia lip, I've worn a burgundy lip, I've worn a purple lip. Um, so I'm really taking the time right now to just slay it with, with the lip products lately and, and make some progress because I feel like last year I was able to pan like nudes and my lips but better and mauve shades but it, I really neglected my heart which is the, like the bolder lipsticks. I love like dark saturated like fun bright colors and I just I have been itching and then I'm wearing a nude today but you know but I've really been itching to get kind of back into those so going into the single ladies I have made a lot of progress so the first thing I kind of wanted to talk about just to kind of give you an overview I was working on this shade from the uh, Too Faced white peach Cop palette called Peach Ice. I love wearing it in my inner corner layered over the um, NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk. I use a sponge tip applicator to apply it and I have hit pan. Woohoo! 
before. That's the other thing I've noticed. Sponge tip applicators, when you're wearing these like really metallic shades and shimmery shades, it actually helps you not only to have a little bit more lasting capability with the shadow, but yeah, bam, a little faster. So just kind of throwing it out there because at first I thought, oh man, I'm going to be wearing this glitter bomb for a long, long time. But no, it hasn't actually been that bad. I mean, it's still going to take me a long time to get through the shadow. But using it with a sponge tip applicator, I actually had a better payoff with it. I wouldn't have glitter that would just get crazy, all irritating in my eyes. But at the same time, I'm, I'm definitely making some progress. So there we go with that. And then when I finished Dawn, I pulled in this warm brown from, it either came out of the Lorac Mega Pro 2 or Mega Pro 4. I don't quite remember, but it's an easy everyday brown. Kind of reminds me of Max Soft Brown, just to kind of give you a reference to go with. It's super easy to wear in the crease. You don't have to think about it. And then the next single lady that I brought in that I'm going to continue rotating these two. I'm not wearing the, the um, glittery white right now, but... Um, I'm also going to phase in this deep espresso brown. This came out of the Too Faced Peachy Matte Palette called Chocolate Dipped. I love, love, love matte espresso browns. They are incredibly versatile because with dark hair, you can use them in your brows. You can use them to set liners. You can use them as your liner. Um, I'm deepening up my outer V with that espresso brown to give me some dimension um, to this eye look under my glasses. It's just... I love, love, love having that in rotation. So I'm gonna continue working on it till it's gone and then I'm gonna move into the next espresso brown, probably from Juvia's Place, but that's gonna be another thing for another time later on down the line. Then another shadow that I've actually hit substantial pan, this is the shade Coconut Cream from the Too Faced uh, Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette. I've gotten to the point where I'd hit so much pan that it was coming off in chunks so yesterday. I went on and repressed it, but I have really, I've fallen in love with the shadow and it was one that I really overlooked for a long time, but I use it to um, put in my inner corner and it gives just this brightening, beautiful effect over the NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk. I use it on my brow bone for a subtle matte highlight so it's not detracting from the adorned shade on my lid. And I also use it as a facial highlight. I'm using it on my cheeks, on my cupid's bow. I run a little bit on my chin and up in the center points of my face, down my nose in this little area right here. It is stunning because it's subtle. I didn't want anything really glittery because right now with it being so hot outside, if I wear a shimmery highlight, it makes me look like a sweaty disco ball. It is not a good look. So um, it's, it's a way that I can kind of combat um, the super glowy, uh, sweaty vibe, but still have a brightening effect to my face and get through some more eyeshadows. So fun times on that one. I'm really enjoying that. And I'd like to be able to hit pan in it again, um, by the next update. We'll see. And then another shadow that I've really been pleasantly surprised by, this is a shade called Love is Love, um, from the Too Faced Clover palette. And I use this to mix with Roxy from the subculture to tone down the orange in that shadow but it kind of tones down the bubblegummy pink out of this one. That just flaked off a little bit, nice. Um, so I've really been enjoying it. I just take one um, quick dab of this shadow and one dab of Roxy, and then I run it into my crease to kind of warm things up a little bit. I love, love, love it. And then <clears throat> I've also been working very steadily on the shade Licorice. This came out of my Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar palette. Um, and the reason I hit pan on this, I'm, I'm using it to set my liner. Um, part of the shadow had flaked off because it's an older formula, I will admit. And so when that top layer flaked off, all of the creamy powdery shadow underneath it was just gorgeous. So I started working into that. I hit pan and now I'm working on expanding the pan to finish out that shadow. So awesome, awesome, awesome to be able to do that with a uh, matte black because that is quite challenging to do. And then um, some of the other singles that I'm going to be bringing in moving forward. When I finish the shade Fudge out of the Anastasia Subculture Palette, I am pulling in the shade Peach Tart. This came out of the Too Faced Peachy Matte Palette again. Actually, no, this may have come out of um, Sweet Peach. Crud, I don't remember. No, I think it's a little bit of a different shade. I think this did come out of Peachy Mattes. I don't remember. Peach Tart. I know if you have this palette, you'll be able to look it up because I've depotted all those things to kind of cut down on the packaging and I put them in um, Adept Cosmetics palettes to kind of free up some physical space in my backup stash so I don't know what everything immediately goes to anymore but I am so excited. It's not quite the exact same brown as Fudge from Anastasia 
but it's close enough and if I put it in my crease, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. So I decided to just run with it. And then because I owe you that get ready with me for the uh, charcoal and coral and gray um, that I was wearing, I have brought in another uh, charcoal shade. I believe this came out of Lorac Mega Pro 4 um, because once I finished the charcoal shade out of Lorac Pro 2, this is a great alternative. I've worn it quite a bit already um, to make sure that it would be a good dupe before I recommend it to you um, in that Get Ready With Me video. So that's kind of where I am. I'm gonna just continue rolling those shadows over and really the focus for Single Lady is gonna be on Adorn, but I'm still gonna bring in that Love Is Love shade. I'm still gonna bring in the matte black, the cream, the matte espresso, and the warm brown and see what kind of progress I can make in the next couple of weeks. I know it's it's been kind of a, a bumpy bumpy ride in terms of getting the chance to sit down and film because life has been absolutely crazy. I know that your life is as busy too and honestly um, I just in the time that I've been able to sit down and film I haven't necessarily been motivated because I'm just I'm kind of over all the drama and I wanted to take a step back from YouTube for a while just until things kind of cool off and, and people are are ready to film some other things again. So that about wraps it up for right now. Thank you so much for sticking it out with me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you giving me some of your time. And let me know in the comment section below. Um, I've actually been kind of thinking about filming a what's in my bag video because I've gotten a lot of questions from um, people around me asking me questions about my bag organizer and things that I carry in my bag. So I'm always curious to watch videos like that because I've gotten a lot of good tips through the years of things that are absolute staples for me now that I can't imagine living without. So would you be interested in that as well? Because I do carry some things that um, I've had tons of comments that people were like, I've never thought to carry that. And like, oh my gosh, I'd reach for that all the time if I had that. So I don't know. I'm just curious if you would be um, you know, loving that idea to watch too. And, and, and it, it would be kind of fun to kind of take it back old school and, and, uh, uh, harken back to some old videos in light of all that's kind of going on with the beauty community right now. So let me know. And, um, that about wraps it up for now. I owe you a pan that palette update. And like I said, I will get moving on those, get ready with me's cause I have two looks, um, that I need to film for you and just kind of sidebar. Um, it takes me a long time to film looks because, I am of the opinion that I really like to get comfortable and confident and change what I want to change about a look before I come on and recommend it to you. And that usually means taking me substantial amounts of time of really getting comfortable with a look. So I don't want you to feel like I'm leaving you hanging all the time. That's just the way that I do things. And I even notice that with people that constantly do first impressions videos or um, a lot of tutorials. If you really notice over time, they tend to stick with the same looks because who doesn't want a, a great makeup day? And if you're not really sure what your eye makeup's gonna turn out like, it can be kind of scary when you're trying some new things. And so safe um, tends to be the route that, that we often go with with videos. And so especially when I'm experimenting with color, um, I like to really give a look time to figure out what works best, what doesn't work, what could change, what could be better, and, and how I'm gonna feel comfortable and confident with that look in any situation before I come on and make those recommendations to you. Because I watch a lot of videos, I like a lot of different makeup looks, but sometimes what looks really pretty on film and camera isn't gonna necessarily work for me in my everyday life, you know what I mean? So. Um, when I come on here with looks, you can know that I am wearing it to take my kids to school. I'm wearing it to the grocery store. I'm wearing it to work. I'm wearing it traveling. I'm wearing it to school. And I am comfortable and confident with that look in any situation. Um, and so, you know, it, w it would be something that if you want to try out, I would hope that you would feel just as comfortable and confident with it as well. So, like I said, thank you again for your time. I really appreciate you. Have a fantastic weekend, and I will be catching up with you soon. See you later.